we are going to take another look at accelerated motion. It is very important because half the time we think acceleration means speeding up. But it is just, just that. We have to consider the change in velocity. This change could mean that either the magnitude is increasing or decreasing or the direction in which the object is moving is changing. Acceleration is uniform or constant if the change in velocity is equal in equal intervals of time. This is also called uniform or constant acceleration. Non-uniform acceleration on the other hand occurs in case the rate of change of velocity is changing with time, which means the change in velocity is not equal in equal intervals of time. We describe average acceleration as the change in velocity divided by the time interval. Average acceleration gives us an idea of how the velocity changes over a period of time. When we consider cars and we talk about a car in real life moving on a road, there is a red light at which it stops, it accelerates a bit, it may need to retard or bring down its speed, it may again pick up speed, it may need to stop. All these things over a period of time will give an idea about average acceleration. Uniform acceleration can be calculated as represented by A. It is given by the ratio of change in velocity divided by the time interval in which it does so. So, A is equal to V final minus V initial divided by time interval or you could put it as V T 2 minus V T 1 divided by T 2 minus T 1. Many a times we need to talk about instantaneous velocity. That is the speed that the speedometer reads for us. And this value is to be considered in a very, very short time interval. Obviously speaking, acceleration will not occur at an instant of time because at an instant you can only have one value for velocity. However, if you consider a short interval of time, this value may change by a small amount or a large value. So, instantaneous acceleration is given as limiting value of delta t tending towards 0 of delta v upon delta t. Sometimes it is more advantageous to use graphs. Position time graphs we have learnt and consequently the velocity time graphs we have also considered. In our lesson, we have seen acceleration time graph can also be drawn. But can we link up position time and acceleration time, velocity time and acceleration time as we did in the case of position time and velocity time graphs? Here is a picture which is showing you some position time graphs. Notice in the first one, there is a position time graph where an arc is shown with the center of curvature above the curve. This is indicating positive acceleration because it is showing velocity increasing. Velocity as given by the tangent drawn to this curve. Similarly, if we considered the second graph which is your graph B, you notice the position time graph to have a curve with its curvature in such a way that the center of curvature would lie below the curve. Also notice that if we were to consider tangent at individual points along the curve, this value will show that the slope of the line is becoming lesser and lesser. That slope was indicative of the velocity and if this velocity is decreasing, that means the acceleration is negative which we sometimes call retardation or deceleration. In graph C, the straight line suggests that the velocity is constant and if velocity is constant, 
we are talking about zero acceleration. So, we can see that we can predict from position time graph the upward for positive acceleration, downward for negative acceleration and a straight line for zero acceleration. Let us consider velocity time graph and see if we can make sense of it to predict acceleration. In graph A, you can see velocity on the y axis and time on the x axis. V0 indicates the initial velocity and in the first graph as you see the straight line shows that the velocity at the end of time t is a value v. This means that the object must have accelerated from v0 velocity to v in a time interval of 0 to t. Graph B on the other hand shows initial velocity v0 which has a higher value as compared to v. That means final velocity at the end of time is lesser as compared to what it started off with. This straight line graph with a slope in the negative direction indicates deceleration or minus acceleration. Let us see graph number C. V0 is negative and the final velocity is even more negative. That means is this a case of acceleration or is this a case of negative acceleration? If you look at it very closely, the direction in which the object is moving is opposite to the one in graph A which means that it is a case of acceleration and the velocity from v0 value has become v both being negative minus v0 to minus v and the value of v is greater than v0 and the time interval that it has taken to do so is from 0 to t. So, this is again a case of positive acceleration. Let us take a look at graph D. In graph D, V0 is positive while the final velocity is minus V. What should this be indicating? Look at the time T1. At that time, the value for velocity has become 0. And as you proceed to time T2, this value has become minus V in the opposite direction. That means the object was moving in an opposite direction as compared to what it is in say graph B and this value first became lesser and became 0. So, it was a case of negative acceleration and as it proceeded further the velocity become even more negative and so we can say that this case is again a case of acceleration. It is important that we study the graph carefully before we predict anything from it. We are going to take another look at Usain Bolt's graph which we had drawn earlier using GeoDebra from the values that we got from the evaluation done on the way he sprints. And if you will recall, Usain Bolt is right now the fastest sprinter in the world. He holds the world record for 100 meters as well as 200 meters. So, if you look at his the position time graph and from there try and predict a velocity time graph which will in turn show you how he accelerates. It is interesting to note that sometimes we feel that the person who is running a 100 meter dash must be accelerating right from the beginning and perhaps keeps the same acceleration which is not the case if we study the graph carefully. So, here we can see Usain Bolt's timing. The XT table shows how the position is changing from 0 to 100 and the time from 0 to 9.69. Using GeoGebra, we had learned how to plot a position time graph. 
and the graph as you can see is a very steep curve. Obviously, you have to run 100 meters in a very short time duration of 9.69 seconds. And if you can imagine a second, then this value is readily imaginable. From those values, if we were to plot a velocity time graph, we would need to calculate the velocity for uh, Usain Bolt. Now, how do we do that? At every short time interval that is given, and in terms of the distance that he travels, we kind of imagine the average velocity that he runs in that short duration of time. And this we can again load on our GeoGebra graph maker. And once we create the polyline, we will see a curve which has got a very, very sharp turn on top. Now, this shows that he runs very fast and increases his acceleration to 11.76 meters per second and this he does in about 5 seconds. So, he shoots up from his speed of 0 to say approximately 44 kilometers an hour in a very short duration. I believe this speed is even more than the fastest car that has been made today. So, it is worth it to study the acceleration graphs for real life situations say for a cheetah or for a leopard and graph it. The only problem would be that we would not have the distance time timing mapped out. There will not be a table available. The research is going on because trainers for say people like uh, Usain Bolt or say Dutichan, our uh, uh, sprinter for Olympics in 2016, their trainers must be looking at how to improve that time, how to provide more and more acceleration to the body so that you can run in a shorter time. So, you have learned velocity time graph shows the time rate of change of position. Acceleration is time rate of change of velocity. Graphs can tell us whether the acceleration is positive, negative or constant. You draw in the velocity time graph for Usain Bolt, which showed very large acceleration from the third to the ninth second. So, you can learn to draw acceleration time graphs from the values that are given. You can make a chart for normal vehicles if you know that the force is constant on it and the acceleration is uniform. Then, at different timings, you can find out what would be the position how much distance would it travel, what would be the velocity in a time interval and you can plot it. Such graphs can give you a better idea of kinematics of systems.